This document has been given to me regarding Northland or Chunland. At the time our land sank, I was in Chunland. There, the following events occurred. There were large lakes that swelled up from the bottom like a bladder, then they split open, and from the cracks emerged a substance, as if it were molten iron. There were mountains whose peaks crumbled, falling down and destroying forests and villages. I witnessed a mountain separating from another and falling straight down. When I later went to look, a lake had formed. After the earth had recovered, a duke from Lindisberg came with his people and a girl who cried everywhere, Maggie is responsible for all the suffering we have endured. They moved on, and their army grew larger. Maggie fled, and his body was found, he had committed suicide. Then the Finns were expelled to a single place where they were allowed to live. There were also people of mixed blood, they were allowed to stay, but many went. With the Finns. The Duke was elected king. The churches that were still intact were destroyed. Since that time, the good Northmen often come to Texland for advice from the mother. But we can no longer consider them true Frisians. In Denmark, it surely went the same way as with us. The sailors who boldly call themselves sea warriors went aboard their ships and returned later. Hooray! When the Croda has passed some time, the descendants will think that the faults brought by the Brockmannon were inherent to their ancestors. I want to guard against that, and that's why I write so much about their customs as I have seen. I can easily skip over the Geertmen, I haven't interacted with them much. But from what I've seen, they have remained the most faithful to their language and customs. I cannot say the same for the others. Those from the Krekelanden speak poorly, and their customs are not commendable. Many have brown eyes and hair. They are angry and impudent and are influenced by superstition. When they speak, they put the words at the beginning that should come last. They say ad instead of ald, sad instead of salt, ma for man, so for skill, soat for scolder, and much more. They also often carry strange and abbreviated names that cannot be attached to any meaning. The Jonia speak better, but they omit the H, and where it doesn't belong, they pronounce it. If someone makes an image of a deceased person and it resembles them, they believe the spirit of the deceased inhabits it. Therefore, they have hidden all images of Friar, Fasta, Media, Fianya, Helenia, and many others. When a child is born, family members gather and pray to Friar that her handmaidens may come to bless the child. After they have prayed, no one is allowed to move or make a sound. If the child starts crying and it continues for a while, it is a bad sign, and it is suspected that the mother has committed adultery. I have seen very bad things about this. If the child starts to sleep, it is a sign that the handmaidens have come. If the child laughs in its sleep, the handmaidens have promised luck. Then they believe in evil spirits, witches, wizards, gnomes, and elves, as if they are descended from the Finns. I want to end with this, and I now think I have written more than any of my ancestors. Fretheric. My husband, Fretheric, lived to be 63 years old. For 108 years, he is the first of his lineage to have died peacefully, all others succumb to blows as they all fought against their own people and strangers for justice and duty. My name is Wiljo, I am the woman who sailed home with him from the Saxon lands. Through language and interaction, we discovered that we both belonged to the Adela lineage, then love arose, and we later became husband and wife. He left me with five children, two sons, and three daughters. My eldest is named Kona Reed, my second Hatchgana, my eldest daughter is Adela, the second Frulik, and the youngest Noct. When I sailed to the Saxon lands, I saved three books, the Book of Songs, the Book of Stories, and the Hellenia book. I write this to prevent people from thinking. They are from Apollonia, I have suffered much because of that, so I want to have the honor as well. I have done more, when Gosimaconta, known for her goodness and clairvoyance and who had become a proverb, died. I went alone to Texland to transcribe the writings she had left behind. When the last will of Frana was found and the remaining writings of Dela or Helenia, I did it again. These are the writings of Helenia. 
I have placed them at the front because they are the oldest. All true Frisians, hail! In ancient times, the Slavic peoples did not know what freedom was. They were brought under the yoke like oxen, forced to mine metals in the bowels of the earth and work hard on mountains for the construction of houses for princes and priests. Everything they did was not to satisfy themselves but to make princes and priests even richer and more powerful. Under this labor, they turned gray and stiff before they were old and died without pleasure, although the earth gave abundantly for all her children. Our runaways and exiles traveled through Twiskland to their territories, and our sailors came to their ports. From them, they heard about equal freedom, justice, and laws that no one is outside of. All these ideas were absorbed by the sorrowful people like Jew by dry fields. When they were full of it, the bravest began to rebel against their chains, which pained the princes. The princes were proud and warlike, so there was still virtue in their hearts, they consulted together and shared some of their abundance. But the cowardly hypocritical priests could not tolerate that, among their invented gods, they had also created evil cruel beings. Then the plague came over the land, and they claimed that the gods were angry because of the disobedience of the wicked. Then the bravest people were strangled with their chains. The earth drank their blood and nourished fruits and grain, and those who ate from it became wise. Sixteen hundred years ago, Atlan sank, and during that time, something unexpected happened. In the heart of Findusland, on the mountain, lies a plain called Casimir, which means rare. There, a child was born, the daughter of a king and the son of a high priest. To avoid shame, they had to disown their own blood. Therefore, the child was taken outside the city to poor people. Meanwhile, the boy, as he grew older, had revealed nothing, therefore, he did everything to acquire wisdom. His intellect was so great that he understood everything he saw and heard. The people looked at him with reverence, and the priests became afraid of his questions. When he reached adulthood, he went to his parents. They had to hear harsh things, to get rid of him, they gave him abundant gemstones, but they dared not openly acknowledge him as their own blood. Overwhelmed with sorrow for the false shame of his parents, he wandered around. Along the way, he met a friar's sailor who served as a slave, from whom he learned about our customs and traditions. He freed him, and they remained friends until his death. Everywhere he went, he taught people not to allow princes or priests to beware of false shame, which harms love everywhere. He said that the earth bestows her gifts according to how one cultivates her, that one must dig, plow, and sow to harvest. But, he said, no one has to do anything for another unless it is done with mutual will or out of love. He taught that no one should dig into the bowels of the earth for gold, silver, or gemstones, which are stained with jealousy and flee from love. To adorn your girls and women, he said, give them enough of the river, gold. No one, he said, is capable of making all people content and happy, but it is the duty of all people to satisfy others as much as possible and give as much pleasure as possible. Science, he said, should not be despised but justice is the greatest science that time can teach us. Because it turns away the earth's annoyance and nourishes love. His original name was Jessos, but the priests, who hated him greatly, called him for shame, which means false, the people called him Krishna, which means shepherd, and his friar's friend called him Buddha, purse, because he had a treasure of wisdom in his head and a treasure of love in his heart. Eventually, he had to flee from the priest's revenge, but wherever he went, his teachings had preceded him, and wherever he went, his enemies followed him like his shadow. When Jessos had traveled for about twelve years, he died, but his friends preserved his teachings and proclaimed them wherever they found an audience. What do you think the priests did then? I must tell you, you must pay close attention and be vigilant against their deceit and intrigues, with all the strength that Rolda has placed within you. As Jessos's teachings spread across the earth, the false priests went to his homeland to announce his death. They pretended to be his friends, feigned deep sorrow by tearing their clothes and shaving their heads. 
They went to live in caves in the mountains and took their treasures there. Inside, they made images of Jessos, which they gave to ignorant people. Eventually, they proclaimed that Jessos was a deity, that he had revealed this himself to them, and that everyone who believed in him and his teachings would come to his kingdom after death, where there is joy and pleasure. Because they knew that Jessos had opposed the rich, they proclaimed everywhere that poverty, suffering, and simplicity were the keys to entering his kingdom. The one who had suffered the most on earth would have the most pleasure after death. Although they knew that Jessos had taught to control and guide one's passions, they taught that one must kill all passions and that the perfection of man lay in becoming as emotionless as a cold stone. To make the people believe they did this themselves, they feigned poverty on the streets. To prove that they had killed all their sensual desires, they had no women. If a young girl had made a mistake somewhere, it was quickly forgiven, they said one must help the weak, and to save your own soul, you must give much to the church. So they had wives and children without a household, and they became rich without working, while the people became poorer and more miserable than ever before. This doctrine, in which priests need no other science than deceptive reasoning, a pious appearance, and injustices, spread from east to west and will also reach our land. But when the priests think they have extinguished all the light of Friar and Jesso's teachings, people will rise in all regions who have kept the truth in silence and hidden from the priests. They will come from royal blood, priestly blood, Slavonic blood, and Friar's blood. They will bring their lamps and light outward, so everyone can see the truth, they will lament the deeds of priests and princes. Princes who love truth and justice will turn away from the priests, there will be bloodshed, but from it, the people will draw new strength. The people of Findas will use their ingenuity for good, the people of Lida their strength, and we are wisdom. Then the false priests will be swept from the earth, the spirit of Rulda will be honored and invoked everywhere. Only the laws that ruled are placed in our hearts at the beginning will be heard. There will be no other masters, princes, or bosses than those chosen with general consent. Then Friar will rejoice, and the Earther will bestow her gifts upon the working people. All this will begin four thousand years after the downfall of Atland, and a thousand years later, there will be no priests or coercion on earth. Dela also known as Helenia, watch over. So spoke Frana's last will. All noble Frisians, hail! In the name of Rulda, Friar, and Freedom, I greet you and implore you, if I should die before appointing a successor, then I recommend to you Tuncha, who is begged maiden at the castle Medizblik, until now, she has been the best. This is what Gosa has left behind. Hail to all people! I have not appointed an honored mother because I did not know one, and it is better for you to have no mother than one you cannot trust. A bad time has passed, but another is coming. Arthur did not bring him forth, and Rulda did not create him. He comes from the east, away from the priests. He will hatch so much suffering that Arthur cannot drink the blood of her slain children. Darkness will spread over the minds of the people, like thunderclouds over sunlight. Everywhere cunning and violence will contend against freedom and justice. Freedom and justice will succumb, and we with them. But their loss will be our gain. From three words, our descendants will learn to teach their people and slaves, universal love, freedom, and justice. In the beginning, they will shine, then they will struggle with darkness until it becomes clear in everyone's heart and mind. Then the coercion of the earth will be swept away like thunderclouds by the storm wind, and all. Violence will be powerless against it. Go, sir.